Hi, I'm Neil Van Niekerk. We're in the studio today, and the topic is the one thing you need to know about bounce flash photography. Well, the real topic is actually how the inverse square law affects bounce flash. The gist of it is, if you bounce your flash properly, your background becomes brighter with bounce flash. I've set up this camera here. I have it marked it on the floor that I'm going to be, boom, four feet away. And then I've got another spot four feet away from that where I'm now eight feet away from the camera. The reason why I have four feet and eight feet marked is we can summarize the inverse square law with this little snippet. Every time you double the distance, you lose two stops of light. Now, the reason why I didn't mention inverse square law in the beginning or in the title of this topic is people's eyes glaze over the click away because it's diagrams and it's logarithmic graphs and it's, it's just too much to handle. Now, it's always a good thing to know about it. Please, if you can, study it. Make it your own. Ingest it. It's important. It affects everything we do with lighting. To summarize it, we just have to remember this thing. For e every time we double our distance, we lose two stops of light. So let's set it up. I have marked that distance, as I showed you. I've set it up with a camera, F8, 100 ISO, and for that distance, I'm going to get proper exposure. That w that's what we calculated. And let's see, we've primed the flash meter and... So the photograph is well exposed, but it's not an artful portrait, it's just direct flash, but we're discussing the principle of the inverse square law here. So in preparing for this video, I set it up that we get proper exposure, flash exposure, at four feet for our settings. And that's why I me measure F8 and, as you see, proper exposure. So that's great. So now if I step back, I measured with the, arts, the ruler again, standing over here, eight feet, and measuring with a flash meter just to confirm. Yep, I get F4. And you can see the photograph is, well, not just terrible in, in composition or that, but it's two stops under. Visually, you can see it's just really dark. Why? I doubled my distance. Every time you double your distance, or half your distance, two stops of light, more or less. It's easy to remember. Please remember that. How does this affect bounce flash? This is where it gets interesting. Every discussion I've seen of the inverse square law have always described it in terms of close proximity to your light source, whether it's an umbrella, softbox, whatever it might be, but you get the steep logarithmic curve closer up. So you'll have F16, F11, F8, and 5.6 and F4. So we really have this very steep curve. And that's where we've always worked when we discuss the inverse square law. What we've neglected is what happens on the tail end when it flattens out. This is where it becomes interesting. Because that steep curve is now nearly flat. And that's why it's important for bounce flash photography. Now we get to where I said when you bounce a flash Properly. What is properly? Okay, so we get direct flash. Sometimes we have to. It's not the best use of light, but you know, circumstances might force us to. Now, when people want to bounce the flash or get better results with on-camera flash, they bounce it. If you bounce it straight up, we get top heavy lighting because now a light source is placed above your topic, your subject. You get dark eyes under the dark circles in the eyes, dark areas under the eyes, because the light's coming from above. And this, for me, is where it gets weird. You work outside, you carefully place your subject in relation to your light, so you get beautiful soft light falling on your subject. You work in the studio, you put your soft box over in a certain area, you get beautiful light on your subject. The moment you put your flash on your camera, suddenly you lose everything. You forget everything you've learned about lighting. I don't understand that. Anyway. Bounce your flash straight up, what do you get? Dark circles in the eyes, not good. Oh, so we pop up a white card, throw a bit of light in, but now we create a kind of a different problem. We have two light sources, the bounce light from above and the light thrown forward from the camera's axis. Eh, not wonderful. We're still dealing with the close proximity 
to our light and a secondary light source which is a little bit further away. We still deal with that rapid light fall off. And then you get domes and diffusers and stuff you put on. I do use it on occasion if I'm really in a pinch, generally not. Properly bouncing your flash in an area like this. And considering the studio here, 10 foot high ceilings, it's a small room, it's a relatively small room. This is an easy place to bounce flash. I'd also say it's a difficult place to bounce flash because the ceiling is so, so low. It actually works in my favor the ceiling a little higher and you can really get an angle. And this is where it gets interesting. This is how you properly bounce your flash. What I meant with bouncing your flash properly is we create a large light source over beyond our shoulders somewhere, off in the distance. Big large light source that floods in, you get soft lighting instead of this ugly lighting or this mediocre lighting, still bad. But creating a big large light source behind you, you get beautiful soft light. Now, if I bounce my flash into that direction, and I, here's the key, I bounce my flash into the direction I want my light to come from. This is crucial. This is the entire concept that I base my bounce flash photography on. I bounce my flash into the direction I want my light to come from. So let's say I bounce my flash off over there. My light source is now distant. So what happens? We're working in the tail end of the curve. We're working in the tail end of the curve. So if I'm getting, let's say, F4 there, and my light source is way over there, and I measure F4 here, where will I get F2.8? Probably over here somewhere. I don't know. My point is, a massive distance with a very gradual drop in light. That is key. So we're going to bounce the flash way off over there. And I'll show you the difference in exposure on myself, whether I'm standing here or I'm standing over here. And even if I stand in the background, you'll see I'm much brighter. I'm not dark. And this is crucial for me with bounce flash photography. Because of the inverse square law, my background becomes brighter because we're working in the tail end of that curve. We're not working in the steep end of the curve where you have that rapid drop off of light. We're working in the tail end. Essential. So let's do it. Let's just do a quick test where I'm standing this far from the camera, but my light source is way off over there. That wall, that ceiling, way up over there. You can see that part of the studio there. We're working about the same distance. So it's, it's really a huge distance. And keep in mind, 10 feet tall ceiling is not that high. The wall is not that far. You can actually get good results in a much larger space, going a wider aperture and a higher ISO. OK, I'm putting the camera back on. We're going to trigger it, bouncing my flash off over there. Let's look at the results. Bouncing my flash like that is wasteful of light, but light that comes back is beautiful and soft, looks great. So F8, uh, sorry, 5.6, 800 ISO, crack the power up in my flash, bounce it off way off over there, exposure looks good. Now I switch the studio lights off for those test shots, and then when I step back eight feet, look what happens. I'm much brighter, or I appear much brighter than the other photographs where I had the flash direct on me. That is how the inverse square law affects bounce flash photography if you bounce your flash properly. Bouncing your flash properly, creating a large light source off over there somewhere in the distance, and we work in this far end that where we taper, where the light tapers off and the background becomes brighter compared to direct. And this is why I don't bounce my flash upwards or with, a or with a dome of some kind, or a light modifier of some kind, because I'm still working this close to my light. If I have a diffuser dome up on it or something, I'm still close to my light source. It also means that anything in the background is still relatively dark. It also means if I'm doing a funky shot, let's say if somebody dancing the dance floor, they have their hand straight into the camera, you have a wide-angle lens, 
The hand's gonna blow out. The face is okay, background is black. Not good, really. It's objectively not good. What looks good is light coming way over there. The hand in the camera is as well exposed as the face as somebody behind. Because light source is way over there and we're working in the flattened end of the curve. So that is how the inverse square law affects bounce flash photography and helps us in giving us better light, better looking photographs. I'm going to show you a few examples of photographs taken at events, which illustrate this very well. This photograph taken at a wedding reception, my lighting was only one flash on my camera. That is it. No additional lighting, just the single flash on my camera. But I was shooting at a fairly high ISO, not that crazy high with modern cameras. F3.5, getting a bit of depth of field there with a super wide angle lens. Full power on my flash, manual mode. And you can see the background goes brighter, brighter, brighter. Now looking at this photograph, no flash, I switch the flash off and you see the existing light at those settings. But the moment I switch my flash on, everything lights up, the groom on the shoulders of his friends and the background's lit up. Look at the people way, way, way back. They're nearly as well lit. Now this might not be the way you want to light your receptions. It's up to you, personal choice, but I like this. It is a very simple way of working. I can walk between the people dancing and everything's well exposed. And with a black foamy thing behind me, I block the flash from hitting people behind me in the face. I like this way of working. It's very simple. I get a very high rate of success with my photographs. Let's look at this photograph of Luke at his Bomitsa party, crowd surfing. There's the DJ in the front, his friends around him. I'm bouncing a flash to my left off the wall at the back of the stage area. That light fall off is very gradual because we're working in the flattened end of the inverse square law and it works in our favor. Again, it might not be what you want with your photographs. I like it because it's a very simple, very efficient way of working, giving you a very high success rate. All because I bounce my flash off into the distance, into the direction I want my light to come from. That is crucial. I hope this video helped. If you liked it, hit like, hit subscribe, that'll help. Also, if you think it's of value, please share it.